Would Ted Moore please come up? Ted Moore. Ted Moore is Marie Moore's father. Have a seat, please. Sorry. Marie Moore, Marie Moore was born in Sydney on May 1st, 1967, was probably called Dartmouth Home. She's the first of a couple of people we're honoring tonight who we affectionately call military brats. Like most kids bearing that title, she certainly lived in a great many places of the world. Unfortunately, for all concerned, she lives half a world away right now, and that's the reason for her absence from the stage. She's presently in South Korea, where she's teaching English as a second language. She started swimming a dog paddle at three. She got her little frog brownie badge at eight, because after twice failing, the instructor didn't have the heart to plunk her a third time. He did make the comment, however, that she better search out something other than swimming to make her mark in the world. Same guy's probably downstairs on the slots right now trying to make a living. <laughs> Marie was simply plodding along with her buddies at the Dartmouth, with the Dartmouth Crusaders until she saw Nancy Garapick's two bronze medal performances in the 1976 Montreal Olympics. Within a few months, she set her first provincial freestyle mark. When she was 10, the Moors were again transferred, and she continued her swimming in Lexington, Massachusetts. Her coach was delighted to add her to the team since she set New England 10 and under records in her first season. These times and a number of events, by the way, were ranked in the top 10 in the United States. Recruiters came out of the woodwork, one of whom convinced Marie and the Moors that it was time for her to get into some serious summer training. When the Yanks say serious, they mean serious. Summer season started in an outdoor pool in May, some days with the morning temperature about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. 11-year-old Marie and her teammates would start swimming at 5.15 a.m. She continued to break records till she was 12, at which time she had to deal with what everyone around her assumed was early burnout. She became chronically fatigued and would have given up the sport had it not been for the discovery that her unnatural tiredness was due to an allergy to feathers, exacerbated by the fact that her first move when she left the water was to bundle herself all up in her winter down-filled jacket. Once the jacket was replaced, she became her old self again. At 13, she attended another elite camp in New London, Connecticut, where she swam 10,000 meters every morning, then did dry land drills in the afternoon before swimming another 10,000 meters every night. In 1981, she returned to Nova Scotia as a 14-year-old, looking forward to joining her old Dartmouth buddies on the Canada Games team. She received the shock of her life when she was told that despite her Canadian citizenship, despite her being born in Nova Scotia, and despite her father's permanent address being Nova Scotia, Canada Games authorities deemed her an American. Her uncles Bob and Peter had been, both been in the Canada Games, as had her Aunt Wendy. Wendy, it sure didn't seem fair to her that she couldn't follow in their footsteps. Coach David Fry believes that in the long run, though, no one will ever know for sure, this may have spurred her on to efforts which she might not otherwise have made if she had been sated by early success at the Canada Games, along with her Dartmouth teammates. It didn't take her long to become repatriated. She set the nation on its heel when at 15, she broke Nancy Garapick's four-year-old Canadian record in the 100 Butterfly. Unmoved by the great fuss and attention she got from those who'd never said hello to her before, she was nonetheless thrilled when she returned home and received a congratulatory phone call from her hero, Nancy Garapick. To no one's surprise, Moore was put on the Canadian swim team. Marie remains, remains a bit of an enigma. She loves to compete, she loves to win, but she hates the attention and adulation which go along with it. Under even the most frightening of conditions, she shows only a poker face to the outside world. This was true even when she first started as a nine-year-old. Competitors began to believe that she was some kind of superhuman. When they watched her step stoically to the blocks for an important race, and they noticed her give her sly little half smile, that one with the big dimples, in response to a shout from one of her crusader buddies. We can now call, uh, excuse me, we can now let the cat out of the bag because she's no longer competing. Truth is, she was as scared as anyone else. 
The way you could tell what, that she was, what she was feeling was to watch her hands, which fluttered in times of perceived stress, despite the nonchalant look in her face. One thing which pushed Moore beyond herself was a coach from the Etobicoke Club in Ontario named Paul Bergen. Word would come back to her through her national team friends that Bergen told his swimmers, there's no way one of my swimmers are going to lose to a maritimer who only swims three hours a day when we swim for five. In the end, Coach Fry believed, such as, uh, much as Nigel Kemp had when he coached Nancy Garapick, basically Fry said three hours a day is enough out of any kid's life, and if every second of practice is a quality second, during the three hours the swimmers involved can get as good as they can possibly get. The five-hour day, he felt, inevitably forced athletes to pace themselves. You'll have to judge which worked better. Moore began to specialize in both the 100 and 200 butterfly when she went to national championships. Her chief rivals were Etobicoke swimmers Michelle McPherson, a 100 specialist, and Jill Horstead, a 200 specialist. Moore always felt like it was two against one every time she went to the nationals. This ultimately brought out the most remarkable thing about her, namely that as the stakes got higher, she was able to focus and prepare at higher and higher levels. She was set apart not only by her statuesque size, but by her unbelievable flexibility. She could join her hands behind her legs and bring her arms up backwards right up over her head without releasing her grip. This contortionist stretching added to that growing mystique. In the butterfly, she was never noted for her speed in the beginning of a race nor coming home in a blaze, but rather in her uncanny ability to keep going at a very fast pace when others faltered. No matter how long the race, she never let her hips drop with the consequent lowering of the kick. To put it another way, she swam much the same in the home stretch as she had in the first lap. Her Canadian 100 meter butterfly record of 101.09 was the sixth best time in the world for 1983. To put it in a different perspective, you should know that this record still stands. No one in Canada has swum faster for the past 12 years. And this includes all of Coach Bergen's upper Canadian five hour a day practices. It has been said many times of many of the truly great athletes that they're so smooth they look as if they're not trying. In 1984, when Moore won the 200 at the Nationals, a rival coach came up to David Fry, he said, I can't believe it. She looks like she's just sauntering along so fluid and effortless. Though only those who most care know what she's feeling and what kind of effort really went into those races, the whole of the aquatic world knows that Marie Moore, despite workouts which differed markedly from those done in Ontario, <laughs> can look back at one having led Dalhousie to an undefeated season in their sixth straight AUAA championship by virtue of her 30 consecutive dual meet wins, she can look back at having been AUAA Swimmer of the Year because of her five gold medals in the AUAA Finals. She can look back at having been ranked nationally among the top three in seven different events by the CIAU. She can look back at having been CIAU Athlete of the Week. More importantly, in the hierarchy of Canadian swimming, she was Canadian champion on seven occasions and four times set national records swimming faster than any Canadian ever. Marie Moore was a member of Canada's national team from 1983-1987, family life ceased to exist as the rest of us know it. You better make that life cease to exist as the rest of us know it. Take her 16th year, for example. Her birthday, May 1st, 1983, she spent at the Hopal Games in Israel. In the summer, she won a bronze medal in the 200 fly in the Pan Am Games held in Venezuela. In the fall, she was named Nova Scotia Female Athlete of the Year. On Christmas Day, 1983, she broke her own Canadian record in 100 fly, and then later that same Christmas morning, she broke her foot on the way to church. <laughs> Dave Fry arranged for her to see Bill Stanish on Boxing Day because of her incredible conditioning. Stanish wrapped her leg instead of applying a cast. This permitted her to work out dragging her foot. In 12 days' time, her broken foot was almost back to normal. Two months after breaking her foot in February 1984, she swam in an invitational meet in Paris came home with three medals, including a gold. Just before turning 17, she swam fast enough to qualify for the Olympics in both the 100 and 200 meter butterfly. Her Olympic dream came true in LA when she wore Canadian colors, finishing 11th in the 200 butterfly. 
I apologize to those of you to whom this point needs not be made, need not be made, but let's all of us stop and think of what it means to say, as was said earlier in this talk, that she had the sixth best time in the world, and in this instance to say she finished 11th in the Olympic Games. Imagine what it would be worth to be the 11th best golfer in the world, or the 11th best hockey player, or the sixth best female tennis player in a given year. Or ask yourself how much it would cost the Toronto Raptors to acquire the 11th best basketball player in the world. In those sports, Marie Moore would be a millionaire many times over. In her sport, the media doesn't start paying due attention until an athlete's among the top three in the world and comes home with a medal. It doesn't make sense. Now that we're all educated, I'll repeat. Marie Moore, the 17-year-old Nova Scotian, ladies and gentlemen, was 11th in the world in the 1984 Olympic Games. As David Fry put it, not bad for a Dartmouth Crusader. Lest you think Marie Moore ever forgot her roots, you should be told about an incident which occurred in 1983. Coach Fry begged her forgiveness when he had to desert her Olympic training in Toronto to take nine of his younger swimmers <coughs> excuse me, to the Junior Nationals in Thunder Bay. She poo-pooed his concerns, said she wouldn't have it any other way. For some Air Canada reason, their plane was delayed in Toronto. As soon as she got word of what happened, she begged off practice and spent the whole of the night swapping stories with her buddies in their hotel rooms. Ladies and gentlemen, Marie Moore is a true champion. She represents everything we want our kids to be. Last year in the Nationals, and the Canadian woman managed to swim the 200 fly in two minutes and 13 seconds. Fastest time swum by a Canadian in 11 years. It so happens that 11 years ago, an eternity in big time sports, Marie Moore swam the same event in two minutes and 12 seconds. We take great delight at this time to present for inclusion to the Nova Scotia Sport Heritage Hall of Fame, the most valuable swimmer in the AUAA, a CIAU medalist, a Pan Am medalist, an Olympian, a seven-time national champion, a woman who still holds Canadian records, a super athlete. We love to claim as a Nova Scotian, no matter what the Canada Games people say, Ms. Marie Moore. At this time, I would call upon Mr. David Fry, coach of Marie's Dartmouth Crusaders Swim Club, to come forward uh, to make the presentation. Just as Dave was coming up here, like I said, that's the most fantastic presentation I've ever heard about Marie, and I would like to get a transcript if I do. We, we will make sure you do. There's a lot of things he said that I didn't even know that I do. I think it's appropriate that uh, I should place myself between these two uh, distinguished gentlemen who have played such a role in uh, Marie Moore's life. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Moore, you said that uh, some things in that presentation you weren't even aware of. Well, I didn't realize her Canadian record that she, uh, she broke when she was 15 still stood. I, I really did not know that. But, uh, I think that's fantastic. It goes to show uh, how good she was then, that 12 years later it's still hope, and there's been a lot of swimmers come by since then. So that's fantastic. Indeed, indeed, a remarkable record. Marie, of course, uh, is in Seoul, Korea, right? South Korea, yes, she's teaching English there. And she's unable to be with us tonight, unfortunately, but we understand. Well, she started, uh, she was born in Sydney. I think we moved from Sydney when she was six months old. She hasn't stopped moving since. Uh, born in Sydney, yeah? Knew yeah, there was something special about that girl. <laughs> David, uh, as they read us too? Uh, David Fry, what, uh, what did, when did you first spot the, 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 something very special about Marie Moore? Oh, as soon as I saw her swim. She was a natural. I, I started coaching Marie when she came back from the U.S. when she was 14, but uh, met her when she was younger, and it was obvious that she had a lot of talent in the sport, and uh, she chose to develop it and, and went from there. From a coach's point of view, they don't come along often enough with that kind of talent, do they? No. When you see them, you know it. That's for sure. When you coach hundreds of them, when you see one that has that kind of natural ability, it's, uh, it's pretty obvious. Is she easy to work with? Yes, very much so. She worked hard in the pool. As, as the uh, presentation mentioned, she uh, very soft-spoken, uh, didn't like the media attention, didn't like a lot of attention from, from any sources, but she went about training hard and uh, 
preparing herself and probably her greatest attribute was when the stakes were, were high and it was a big competition, she was always ready to compete. I don't think most people realize the discipline that is involved in that particular uh, area of, of athletics and probably more so than, than any, anything else. Uh, you got to get up early in the morning and you got to stay in that pool, you got to stay with it. Yes, that's for sure. And uh, every morning at 5.30 they're at the pool and Marie I don't think liked the early mornings more than any more than the rest of us did, but uh, she did what needed to, to be done in order to be uh, the champion she was. Given that kind of a regimen, Mr. Moore, there must have been times that she needed a lot of support from her family. Well, uh, especially at 4 o'clock in the morning, I had to drag her out of bed. <laughs> she wasn't a morning person, but the happiest day of my life was when she was 16 and got her driver's license. <laughs> He's, good luck, man. Is she involved in swimming uh, in Korea? She'll swim until she dies. She loves it. She's a uh, part fish, I think. That, uh, I'm sure she has deals. No, she still loves to swim. I think when she comes back to Canada, she'll be swimming masters. There's a very strong masters program around here. And she, she loves swimming. And it's great. There's one good thing. She didn't make any money swimming, but it is a sport that you can do the rest of your life. Exactly. Yeah. Well, she's a great Nova Scotian, a great Canadian, and we're all very proud of her here tonight. And please convey our finest and warmest greetings to her. Thank you. Bye. I was talking to her a couple of days ago and she asked me to pass her thanks on to everybody, especially the ones that nominated her, the people that voted for her, and she really wanted me tonight to publicly thank her coaches, because without their dedication and hard work, as Mr. Fry put in for many years, she would have never reached the, uh, the level of excellence that she did. I think uh, two of them are in the Sports Hall of Fame, and now you're in the Sports Hall of Fame, do you know? <laughs> uh, I know Nigel can't. Nigel, well, hey, have patience, David. Uh, you're young. <laughs> Without the coaches, uh, the athlete uh, would never go anywhere. But, uh, they work almost as hard as, uh, as the uh, swimmers. I think that's very appropriate. The coaches are always the great unsung heroes of any sport. Thank you, David. Mr. Moore. Just before uh, 